His name is listed as Steve Koikonen. I researched that name, and there's nothing there before his current existence, his current persona. This is from his first episode as Slow News Day. This was published on October 10th, 2018, a little over two years ago. His co-host was different. Her name is apparently Sarah Hall. That looks like a common name. Maybe I could research her a little bit. She seems to have disappeared. There are only 190 views. He's got many videos on his channel with not that many views. If you watch him in this one, he's a total junkie, a total loser, who no one would listen to or care what they think. You may not like me, this and that about myself, but I'm smart and honest with integrity. I'm not a military shell. I'm pretty sure someone could call that university or get in contact with that university in Ireland and find out that I do have that master's degree because that's called reality. That master's degree is in social theory. My number one thinker who I studied was Eric Fromm. That's where I'm coming from. The main meat and potatoes of today's show, the main gist, is that this guy admitted Steve-O, Steve, Steve Poinkinen, he admitted that he's from the military. These people are that stupid. I'll share that right now. A little bit of clip from that. That's the main point, that these are shills, that they are connected. They make it easy to connect them. They connect themselves. They do it to themselves. But before I plug in that where he's admitting he's military, if you slide down a little bit, it says intro music by Brant Dunn. I don't know what's up with that. I don't know why they always put in some type of uh, the intros by this person. It's as if they were given a sheet with instructions. Below that it says produced by Barry Tanner. That's it for info. The song was produced by Bruce Tanner, by Barry Tanner, or Barry Tanner is producing Slow News Day. Who has a producer for an internet show on the first one? How is this guy so now famous? Why is he such a player? When you look at him here, he's such a drug addict and loser. So yes, uh, this is where I, as my own technical engineer, tells myself to put in where he's admitting he's military because that's the uh, beef. That's what's for dinner. It's beef. That's for dinner. God, I said that joke earlier today. It got big laughs, but I'm having trouble uh, reproducing the art that I created earlier. It was satire. I'm Robert Mitchum on an ad. He went, he, uh, not to be confused with where's the beef. He was showing for the beef industry. I don't know if this was before or after Oprah said something. Now I'm just confusing myself, but the thing he said was beef. It's what's for dinner. So even though um, we're still in that first screenshot, so Barry Tanner, even if Barry Tanner is not his producer and was just some stupid, like let's put down who produce the music. Let's show the copyright. We're pro-anonymous and we're so subversive and we're going to put down the, we're going to credit the intro music. But later on, you see from my video yesterday uh, that he, they do have uh, engineers. All these places have engineers. Jamal Thomas was interviewed by this guy. He's the epitome of the technical engineer who became an internet personality, a fake one. These are all fakes. They have everything lined up for them, yet they still are unsuccessful. Lee Camp would not be successful if not for his stint on Russia Today. And I still don't think he's that successful. Look at Whiny Man. I'm clearly digressing, but look at Whiny Man. Graham Elwood, he doesn't get many page views. So yes, before going... To the next screenshot, uh, let's listen to the moron junkie alleged 
as Steve Poikinen with the blank past, the blank history. Let's now watch and admit that he's from the military. Th I thank him for this. I thank you morons for this. We're, we're all just up at ungodly hours and fucking, I don't know, it's almost like being in the military where if you can take 20 minutes, you learn how to take 20 minutes and then you yeah. just fuck, get up and go again. This guy's claim for fame is apparently recently uh, <clears throat> a couple, I found a, uh, all right, basically this guy made a video saying that Pete Buttigieg was a CIA agent. And everyone was thinking that. It was obvious. I think there was uh, a clear connection. But I don't really care. The main point is that Steve was plugged by Daily Beast. I have one more example I have one more example of that. He was plugged by something called LGBTQ Nation. They were seemingly the same story. It's the exact same story. This is how the internet is rigged. Stories are manufactured. Narratives are manufactured. It says it's by a different author. It's fake. It's all fake. They're trying to place these people up. They want a point of departure. I've mentioned this before. They want you at a point of departure where you don't care who these people really are. So I made a video. I said, who was Whitney Webb? You do this down the line. And every time, they turn out to be shells. They turn out to be the smith Munt legalized propaganda shells working for the Five Eyes and affiliated military government groups. You get some screenshots from the earliest videos made by Steve. He's a junkie. He still is a junkie, although... He looks like a junkie, in my opinion. He's a bit cleaned up now, but he is still obviously showing signs of having brain damaged. He damaged his his body and brain. He looks like he it looks like he's done. Ah, episode number six. So the guy had just joined the internet. He was a total joke and sucked. He had some weird host who's gone as if she never existed. And then just a few episodes into his YouTube career, look who shows up but the whiny man, Graham Elwood. Episode 14, Savage Joy. Oh, what a coincidence. Episode 19, Sam Tripoli. Ah, so there we see uh, the Joe Rogan connection right away. Episode 25, the bottom right corner. Who is it but Superman himself, Jamal Thomas? Cynthia McKinney turned out to be an obvious COINTELPRO agent. Or she's B, shite, cuckoo, cra cra, whatever it's called by the kids nowadays. I mean, really, the FBI and CIA, NSA, they love to push. Who we are, they want to control us. They're fascists. That's why these fake thinkers, these fake journalists are plugged. Jamal Thomas, give me a break. Ah, Ron Placone. Steve-O has had a close relationship to all these shills that keep popping up. Ron Placone, Graham Elwood. There's the CIA, is Pete Buttigieg a CIA Democrat? It was a 12-minute video. And then all of a sudden, he gets pushed for that. That video got 2.6 thousand views. He still got 15,000 less views on that one than my Hilaria Baldwin video, which has probably padded my stats quite substantially for a small channel like myself. It would probably take... A thousand nailed in videos to even come close to 17. I would need, what's that, a thousand? If I made a thousand videos and got 17 views each, I think that would match my Hilaria Baldwin production. So, Tim Foyle, oh, 
let's keep mentioning tinfoil. There's Ron Flacone again. He, I think that's him. The top one at number 35, the tent revival. Yep, that's him. And then below, there he is with a CIA shirt, April 18th, 2019. 43 views. You can watch this guy. He's got nothing to offer. He's not even a hippie. He's he's no he's from the military. He admitted it. This is the screenshot portion of the show. I did slip in that military thing earlier because I didn't want to make it seem like this was total clickbait. I think they added the Glory Jones lady sometime last year. I have clips. I can share some clips from when they had Lee Camp on as a guest. She acted less like a drug addict. You can see that she was military. This is where the military clip came from. I'll get to that when we go through the note portion of this. I've tried to streamline my video making. Here we go. The la Here's the last screenshot I have to share. And then we can... Go through. I only have a few notes to set up the video work. I left a comment for Yuri. I left him a comment yesterday. And then he acted stupid. And then I just left him another one today. I thought this was pretty funny. I know he's not going to say, yeah, you got me. I'm busted. What I did prove is that he's acting stupid. It's got the same kind of reaction that Manitok had to me when I trolled him. They try to act smart, dumb. They think they're being clever to act dumb. That doesn't even make sense to myself. Or it does. So, right, uh, what I said to him was, how much do you get paid working for Five Eyes? I didn't ask, how much does someone get paid working for Five Eyes? Now, if someone had asked me that, I would say, why are you asking me that? Me? Why me? But no, this guy says, good question. And of course, he doesn't use capital letters, so you know he's not that educated. He doesn't know how to write. He goes, wouldn't know. I suppose it depends on what, depends what role your, he doesn't use your correct, your allocated to. He ended the sentence with a preposition. There's all sorts of wrong with his grammar. There's no excuse that he's from Belgium because if you listen to him, it's obvious he's was raised in America or England somewhere, probably America. It's obvious his dad or someone was a CIA agent or something weird or military. I'll rephrase it. How much are you paid by the front group to be a confidential informant slash disinfo shill? I saw you were also on with Manitalk. There are too many coincidences. It's obvious you're all faking personas. So I don't know if he'll respond to that or not. I don't really care. I just like to get into their heads to let them know that they're exposed. I don't care that I can't uh, prove it to some amazing level. I prove it in uncovering the implicate order. I uncover it through letting them admit to it through their lack of knowledge, their informants. They're not agents. They're not smart. They're working off of PowerPoint sheets. That's that for the screenshots. I like to get into their heads and then watch as they crumble, as they reveal themselves. I did that to H.A. Goodman. I got into his head about half a year ago, and then he immediately shut down his live streams. He went into some kind of rehab mode. He started wearing the hats and this and that. Now he feels confident enough to come back and do some live streams. But if you watch H.A. Goodman, the guy's done. His face is done. 